Thank you. <laughs> like I said to a couple people, I've never had to talk about my paintings. It's something like this. I've just always, my paintings speak for themselves. And so for this time, I'm like, it's kind of exciting to get to tell you about why I did something or how I did it. So um, I wanted to start with a quote that I think tells a lot. And it is, it's good to have an end to journey to or toward, but it is the journey that matters in the end. Okay, well, my journey began on a ranch in the Black Hills of South Dakota. My four siblings and I had a multitude of animals. We cared for both tame and wild. My older brother, who's there, he probably was maybe eight or nine at the time when he found Twinkle, the antelope. Um, her mother had been killed on the highway. And so he and another kid scoured the area around where she had been crossing the road and found this tiny newborn fawn and brought it back and we bottle fed it. And, and then on the other side, Abe was one of uh, many dogs and cats and whatever. Um, this was my first painting. I was nine at the time. <laughs> It's an elf on a branch, and it went to the Fall River County Fair because I was just started in 4-H at the time, and I'm sure it got a blue ribbon. <laughs> yeah. Well, animals were a constant on the ranch, not only caring for them, but showing them at 4-H events and livestock shows. Um, we had started out with Herefords and switched to Angus. And we spent the rest of the time at the ranch was uh, registered Angus cattle. And I didn't learn to ride a bike as a kid. <laughs> My transportation didn't require pedaling, <laughs> never crashed, and never tipped over. And this was one of the photographs that ended up when I was Miss South Dakota that became kind of the go-to whenever they do articles about me, they love to have that picture out there. Um, in high school, I was not one of the girly girls. I was on the rifle club. I was a secretary of the rifle club. I cheered and participated in as many athletic events as they were available 70 some years ago, or you know, 50 some years ago. And so I was shocked when I was elected or voted the homecoming queen. And then later I found out that my little brother and a cousin convinced the whole freshman and sophomore classes to vote for me. So, so, and then it became a series of all kinds of things that changed my life. I was asked to compete in the JC Rodeo Queen Contest of which I won only because my dad had a friend that had an amazing barrel racing horse. All I had to do was hang on and not fall off. <laughs> and since we raised registered Angus, the I entered the queen contest there and spent a fun year uh, at livestock shows, handing out ribbons to the winners. And then at the time I worked for the A&W Root Beer uh, drive in in Hot Springs, and the owner asked if he could sponsor me in the South Dakota teenager pageant, and I said, sure, okay, and so I came up to Huron and came home with a crown. I was shocked, <laughs> but then I had a group in Hot Springs of ladies like yourselves that sponsored different things, and she, one of them came up and said, can I, can we sponsor you in the Miss Fall River pageant? I said, okay, well, then that led to the Miss South Dakota pageant and then going to the Miss America pageant. So, like I said, this made a huge change in my life. My, and here is uh, my love of nature, wildlife, and art was the driving force behind my talent presentation. In front of my oil painting of an eagle, I performed an original dramatic monologue portraying the last living eagle blaming the human race for the extinction of my species. I was an environmentalist before anybody knew what it was. <laughs> as an art student at SDSU, I seriously began my career as an artist. I tried all different art forms, 
I failed at many of them. And then oil painting just seemed to fit. Um, the, let's see, the, my husband and I got married the summer before my senior year, and we moved to Minot, North Dakota, <laughs> to the Air Force Base. We both grew up in South Dakota, and they send him to North Dakota. Anyway, that was when life took another turn. Whoop, hit the wrong button. <laughs> and another turn. <laughs> and another turn. I knew I could be a good mom or an accomplished artist, but not both at the same time. When our son left for the University of South Dakota, <laughs> my husband said, it's your turn. And that's when he turned my son's bedroom into a studio for me. I was a little, and, and my husband said, add this, that when Dan returned for Christmas break, my husband said, I've got good news and I've got bad news. The good news is mom's got a studio. <laughs> the bad news is it was your bedroom. <laughs> but the couch pulled out. And he was fine. But I was a little unsure if I could pick up where I'd left off 30 years ago. So I owned a daycare at the time and decided if I could do portraits, which was something I never even attempted while I was here at school, that then I would continue and try to get better and work on my artwork again. So I started doing all the kids at the daycare. The five that are around are my grandkids, and those were ones I, the first attempts, which were pretty rough. And by the time I got to the 13th kid at the bottom, I finally felt like, okay, I can do this. I just, so then I went all in and said, I'll do this. Okay. Then I, one of the worst parts of trying to be an artist is traveling and setting up booths and you sell some prints hardly enough to pay for the booth rental and then there's travel. And at one I was at, um, my mom and I were on two of the posts trying to hold down our pop-up tent and the wind was so bad and it was raining. And then I saw somebody's tent fly up about 20 feet in the air and go about 50 yards, sprinkling jewelry all the way. So, and that was when I finally said, you know, I'm done with this. But at one of these shows, this is a, a bird from Robert Gossel, who was an artist in Hot Springs. And he was well known for his birds. And he had given me this at one point. And and he came up when I was at one of those shows with a, with a canvas held to his chest. And he goes, Susan, I made a portrait of you from when you were Miss South Dakota, and I want to give it to you. I said, oh, that's nice, Robert. <laughs> oh, I had a hard time. <laughs> I had a hard time. It was like, oh, oh thank you. Robert. That's so nice. And that was <laughs> and that was the time that I thought, you know, I'm not gonna call myself an artist until I really can put something out that people don't <laughs> surprise. So, you know, he was good with colored painting of birds, not so much as a portrait artist. And then this was my first gallery display. I was at a friend had a gallery in Hot Springs and invited me to come. And I had been doing oil paintings and started just doing flowers and things. And it was fun. But oil paint has a hazardous, <laughs> if you don't have the right system, the to breathe and it can be the fumes are very hazardous. So about that time, I decided I would start doing landscapes in pastel. So these are some of my first ones. I loved the pastel because I could do dry on dry like I'd done wet on wet with oil. I could blend and I didn't have to wait for them to dry. I could continue working. And um, okay, that's one. Okay. And here's the Badlands. Mm -hmm. And this is the one I 
told her earlier that my husband names most of my paintings and he has a great imagination and this one is one of those and it was um what did I say take me home what's the rest of the, the song <laughs> there you go we got it okay um this was called 500 miles I'm not sure how many miles that road. This is one that was uh, got second place in a statewide show. And the judge was from New York. And he was explaining why he gave this one second place and why he gave another one first place. And keep in mind, it was a room full of artists from Nebraska. And he said, I would have given this first place, but storms don't get that dark <laughs> and I think the place just erupted and he was like okay okay <laughs> because out in New York I guess they don't have storms like that and this uh yeah that was on the other side uh, highway 19 near Madison there's kind of a slew there that um that's where that's from. This one's called Prairie Boundary, and uh, that received quite a few different awards over the years. I've shown it at several places. This one's just called Winter Bale. Probably I tell you, titled that one because it's pretty obvious. <laughs> and this is Big Boy Buff, and he was one that um, I had uh, sold it at a nurse. It was a a traveling nurse fundraiser so I got a little bit of money but the nursing association got a lot more of it and this is Sly and uh, I originally had done just him in the snow and the judge said you got to bring in either a blue or a green into your painting you've got too much of the warm colors you don't have enough cool so I added a tree behind him <laughs> this is Roundup and it's uh, from the Buffalo Roundup, obviously. And um, the pastel oil or the pastel painting was sold right away, but I did make G clay prints on canvas, and those have sold very well. And I, and this is Iron Mountain Mama. And if you've been in the Black Hills, you know, if you go on the Iron Mountain, you're going to get <laughs> and just pine cone. And then these are, and that's, yeah, the guy. Okay, whoops, I had somehow ended up. Okay, I'll go with that part. <laughs> I thought this was sweet. Um, this is my watching series. And my watching series is obviously my animals. And um, they're watching what we do to the earth. It's again, my environmentalist thing coming back. They watch what we do the earth because they're dependent on our protecting the environment. So I have clued in now my granddaughter that helped me put this together. She goes, grandma, if you just have the painting, it's too far away from his eye. So she was the one that said, let's folk, let's zoom in on the eye on the same slide. So she, yeah. And the baboon always scared my grandkids. <laughs> they thought that was terrible. I did that. And then we've got a polar bear and the giraffe. So these are all, I've got about 30 of them in my collection of of watching the watching series. And after the pastel, I just really liked to be doing things and I couldn't carry around all the pastel stuff and it was messy. So I started packing my box of, my little bag of colored pencils and I'd work on things. And in fact, one of them, it was a snake I was worrying, working on. And of course it was just the head and, and the big eye. And, and I was in an airplane on the way to Hawaii and we were going and I thought, ah, you know, that's a huge long trip. I'll have plenty of time to work on it. So I'm working and a, a stewardess comes up, or I should say, what do they call them now? Flight. A flight attendant. <laughs> anyway, she came up 
and was going, oh, we have an artist. And she goes, oh, snakes on a plane. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And then my panda, that's one of the grandkids favorites. And then this little ostrich, mm -hmm. but, um, and then Wonderful. this guy, yeah. And a zebra. Okay. Then I'm back. Now this is where I was going to go next. Um, then in 2018, I decided to finish my degree that life had interrupted and we have 10 granddaughters and six were either in college or just about to start college. And I didn't want any of them to say, oh, I can't, I don't think I can finish and have them say grandma didn't finish and she did okay. So I thought I'm going to go back and finish and then they can't do that. And so I went back in eight, 2018 and I graduated in 2021, 52 years after I started. <laughs> But I was very lucky to have as one of my instructors, Liz Heron, and she's got a painting upstairs. And uh, she was amazing. And she said, I'm going to pull you out of your comfort zone. And boy, she really did. Um, she was amazing. So here's some of them I did in her class. And I'm still experimenting with some abstracts. And I still do my wildlife and landscapes. Um, so I... They, they were just fun. And like this one, she had, um, we had to do three exact paintings. And they were, the first ones had just the red ball where the sun or the sunset and everything else was blues and greens and grays. So we had all cool colors and just that one. So she said, this is color, a color crisis is what she called it. So then the second painting you had to do, add a little more that made it kind of better. And then at the end, you did enough to make, a, so you had these three exact ones and you could see the progression that the color, that, that one crisis color set it all off. And then if you continue to work in other colors, then it made it work. And then I really went crazy with geometric shapes and colors and just had a lot of fun with this. And that one reminded me of a circus. Mm -hmm. And one of the, and all of these paintings were my final project and we had to display them all along. And one of the girls in the class said, oh, your paintings are my nightmares. <laughs> she said, that's what I see when I have nightmares. And I was like, okay, I think that was a compliment. <laughs> I'm not sure. But I had a lot of fun with it. And um, I still see Liz. We get together for coffee once in a while. And because I was an elderly student and she had all these young college kids she would put me in a corner to she said protect me because it was during covid that i was doing all this so i really appreciated her caring about what i did okay this is what i'm working on right now it started out and uh, my husband and i took a a trip for our 50th anniversary and went to to Spain and France and somehow without the the lines the circles was on my phone and I don't know it was a I don't know if I took a picture of the floor or what it was but somehow so I thought okay that's kind of a cool thing I'm going to work on that so I'm still that's not done yet but it's in process okay this the assignment was to do blocking, which is, is kind of like almost doing a paint by number. Mm -hmm. You know, you uh, you don't have the blending that you do. This is my daughter, triple jump. She competed here. She's an All-American in the triple. And she was the first collegiate South Dakota girl to go over 40 feet. Mm -hmm. So wow. she was a good athlete. And um, this the other daughter was a high jumper. And she was here one year and then was homesick and <laughs> came back to Nebraska. And my son, they won the state tournament that year. 
and my husband doing what prior to um, Fosbick, Fosdick flop, the Fosbury flop, Fosbick, anyway, yeah, Fosbury flop. Anyway, he was a Western role and he competed for South Dakota State University. And these are the examples of in the auction that's going on, the, it's a silent auction now and it's okay. Um, I'm donated a 20 by 20 inch painting of whatever you, if you bid on it, whoever the winning bid gets, I'll paint in this style of, of course, I make, since it's an athletic thing, I said, you know, an athlete of your choice. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully somebody will bid on it. And then this was one um, I had done and a lady asked me to do this painting. And now this is, this is uh, before I went back to school and it was being, uh, I was doing a, a fundraiser for a cancer uh fundraiser and she wanted me to do a painting and so she, but she wanted a big on her wall and it was a trip tech but so I was painting it and I did this first for her and she said yeah I really like that but I don't want white uh behind the trees I want red so I said okay and then about a year later she calls me up and she goes Sue I'm sorry I just saw the most beautiful sunset and it had white at the bottom. <laughs> and I said, I'm not going to repaint your painting. <laughs> she said, that's okay. I know. Anyway, but what I'm doing now, that's nice because I like commission work because you get paid whether you, <laughs> no matter what. So this was in that one cat doesn't have an ear. That's not a mistake on my part. <laughs> so I've had several women buy commission paintings and they've been gifts for their children and their pets so this one and then this dog and that's actually this one was done for my mother that was her pet that was harley and this one that was a little crazy <laughs> and then this just shows the progression of how i work i start with the eyes and then the face and then I do the body and then at the very end, do whatever the background, foreground, whatever. And again, here's another one that was done for a, as a Christmas gift. And again, I start at the eyes and, and progress. Now that one, I actually started the ear because that was a really dark area there. And that's, I wanted to make sure I got that dark and and have that light that was next to it to make sure that those were done correctly and this was my son-in-law owns four mm. dairies and has quite a few feedlots that support the dairy and he had taken this photograph and said would you do this for me i said sure so it's a three by four foot painting of his cattle and uh, then I gave it to him for Christmas, so <laughs> I didn't get paid. <laughs> <laughs> this one's called Fence Post Landing. Um, it was one I had done a few years ago. And oh, and these these are my birds of a feather collection. And I'm at, um, I'm kind of going off my script here. I should be doing, um, they, uh, I'm a member at the East Bank Art Gallery in Sioux Falls. It's at the 8th and Railroad. If you've been there, come on in. These I'm showing you now are part of my Birds of a Feather collection that's there now. And I have, I think, eight or nine of these. And in summer pastel, summer color pencil. Um, I don't think any of these are acrylic. That one's a pastel. Oh, this one's fun. It's an ink pencil. And then you do the pencil with the ink and then you use a water wash and it blends and does crazy things. And it was really fun. I'd never done it. So this was the first attempt using an ink pencil. And then this guy is, my husband called him Winter Habitat. He's kind of puffed up trying to stay warm. And enjoy the journey and try to get better every day and don't lose the passion and the love for what you do 
I, it's a combination. I do pastel pencil and the and the pastel like it's normal, but also I use pan pastel. Have you yeah. used that? No, it's really fun, especially if you're doing like a landscape with a sunset and clouds and stuff. The pan pastels just you can do anything with them, and it. Something else I need to buy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you apply them with? Um, a lot of times my fingers end up just a mess, but sometimes um, I, well, there are several things. There's um, an applicator that is shaped different shapes. Like there's a little triangle one that looks like a little spade and there's uh, rounded tipped ones and they're on a plastic thing. But the end, you have these little, little specially made foam rubber things that stick on the little spade and the little flat thing and the little square. So you can use it, you can flip it over and use it, and then you can throw them away and put another little sleeve on. It would be like a little foam rubber sleeve that goes on or sponge kind of sleeve. But, mm -hmm. um, Recording what we've the question. Oh, oh, okay. How do I preserve <laughs> the pastel? I use a fixative. It's a spray that goes on. I usually use a workable fixative because I'm known for hanging it on the wall and six months, two years, five years, I'll go, oh, I shouldn't have done that there. I should so I'll go back and do something on it. And all your right I've used it and it's, it's oh it it takes away your whites and I I do the fixative and then I put some of the white back on and just and then of course when I frame it make sure that I use an um, enough matting to make sure that the image is far away from the glass and and then the and of course in a lot of the shows if you use glass you have to use a plexiglass because they don't want, but then, so then some shows realize that the plexiglass isn't good with the pastel and, and let you do the glass, and some don't, so. You make a space between your, between your paper, your, your, drawing or whatever your pastel and the mats? Not really because my I've I've just used the mat. I, I haven't been worried it's about it. It's been up against it and I've never had any problem. But I just I make sure I have most of my pastel will have two layers of mat at least to keep it away from the glass because it's the glass that wants to suck the pastel away. And even then Sometimes I'll take it all apart. You can see kind of a little bit of the, the picture in on the glass and have to clean it back off. But thank you so much. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah.